Hello and welcome to the Radio Silly Video News. Sign up to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Radio Silly for updates on what's happening around the islands and video reports featuring the people and places you know. Our video report is brought to you in association with Truro and Penwith College. He served as a councillor on our local authority since 1997, but Gordon Billsborough has decided to resign his position following the public outcry over the senior officer's pay increase. Gordon says he's received many emails of support after he made the decision to quit. I've done it because I've discovered, or I believe, there's a lot of the people who voted for me at the last election, and I get a very high vote. I, I believe... Uh, that they have lost confidence in me because of my stand on the officers' pay increase. I'm not talking about the people who've been making well statements. I'm talking about a great mass of people, and I just get a feeling that they've lost confidence in me because of the decision I've made. And therefore, I see the only honourable thing I could do is resign from the council. So it's not a case of your resigning because you think it was a wrong decision, you just think you've misjudged the mood? Let me make it quite clear. I do not think it was a wrong decision, and I would make the same decision again. OK. Why do you think it's important, then, that the chief officers do get this pay rise? I think because they have fallen behind the average pay for what they should be getting on the mainland. Comparisons have been made with several councils. We've employed two consultants... And if you look at the pay for equivalent jobs, it's very difficult to find a precise equivalent job, but there's no doubt in my mind uh, that we do pay them less than they should be getting. For instance, in 2002, the council agreed that the officers' pay ought to maintain a fairly equal parity with similar jobs on the mainland. Uh, this has not happened, and the result is the officers have fallen behind. People have said, as you know from the forums and discussions, that uh, on the islands you do expect to earn less money. That's why we're obviously convergence and formerly an objective one area, and you can't expect parity. Do you think that's a fair argument? That is rubbish. To say you can't expect uh, equal money because you live here is utter nonsense. Are you going to say to a doctor, of course, if you come here, you can't expect the money? Are you going to say that to a nurse? Are you going to say that to any other professional person? You come here, but you've got to accept less money. I've never heard such rubbish. So we're in a position at the moment where you've certainly got a lot of council laws, a lot of council members, elected members, who are seemingly opposed to this decision. Do you think this is dangerous for the council? I don't think it's dangerous. I think it's unwise to keep on with the policy we have been doing of, being officer, of having officers paid less than parity with the mainland for similar jobs. For instance, when we try and advertise for jobs, and it's happened in the past, we do not get the response or the right calibre of candidate largely because of the salaries. And this has happened time and time again. We've spent money on advertising. We have an instance where we have a uh, traffic controller, which we've had to buy in on contract. This is costing the council, with all the on costs, something like £90,000 a year. Is that right? One of the, the popular views that's been put forward is that the whole notion of the pay rise is in, in connection with retention as well as recruitment. And the people, the chief officers, many of whom have been here for quite some time and there may not be such an issue of them needing to be retained because you know, they're very much involved in the community or at least they've, they've got their feet under the sort of local table. Do you think that's a valid argument? I do not think it's a valid, a valid argument. We should be paying for the post... I mean, if we value a post at a certain salary, uh, that salary ought to be paid. You don't say, well, the officer or the person in the post has been here some time and is not likely to leave. That is the wrong attitude altogether. You should pay the rate for the job. It's as simple as that. Do you think this has been handled well in terms of the feelings of the rank-and-file staff? There are a lot of very angry people who feel overlooked from what we've been told at the very least and you know, some people have stronger opinions about than that because they haven't had such pay rises. I can understand how they feel. The first time we discussed this in February it was only going to be the chief officers uh, and then um, we decided then, this is why I voted against it, we ought to include more of the middle staff, more of the middle management and we have looked again and uh, we have considered nine more posts. 
but it was a case of the top officers were getting less than the equal jobs on the mainland, even though they were a smaller authority. So to clarify that point, your original objection to the initial pay hike was because it wasn't inclusive enough for enough officers, is that right? Uh, yes, that is one reason, but I personally wanted a further opinion, and we got that opinion by going to uh, another consultant who did a, a, a wider range of uh, investigation into pay rates, and, and they came back with that. Uh, we, we can't say everybody's been paid too little. We were lo looking at the top jobs. We've had some people have made a uh, comparison with the recent Irish referendum, i.e., if you have a vote and it's not the result you want, have another one. And that's, that's the view that people have been putting forward in connection with this consultant. If you, you bring a consultant once and they don't get the desired result, bring in another one. No, How would you view that? That is completely wrong. We wanted a wider band of information. It was not a case of trying to get the answer we wanted. It was a, a case of to look around over a broader field, have a second opinion and have more information. As simple as that. It's cost about £9,200 from what we understand um, to bring these consultants in. I mean, that, that's over half some council staff's annual salary. Do you think that's right to do I, that? I, I can't recall the exact uh, amount we paid, right? But it is f very foolish to compare the cost of a consultant with salaries because the... the um, What's the word? The decision we are making is going to be for a long time to come. And if we can't get the staff because we've not been able to uh, get the applications, then the council will lose money. They're losing it now on the uh, traffic controller. £90,000 a year. There are some people that say this whole process has been, if you like, managed, albeit all uh, above board and within the law. It's not been maybe in the spirit of things and that... Things have been very tight on timelines. We've heard suggestions from councillors that they were only made aware of um, the con second consultant's report that was adopted at the 11th hour, and it wasn't time particularly for North Island to react to that. Do you think that's a fair claim that people who aren't on the PNR committee, Policy and Resources Committee, have actually been included in this? Every councillor has access to receive reports of every committee, even the red ones, and it was known that this item was uh, coming up. They can attend the committee, if they so wish, any councillor can, but only the members of the committee can speak. So even if they had all the information a fortnight beforehand, it would not make any difference as regards the decision because they cannot speak at the PNR committee. I, I don't think they've been kept in the dark. People want to know where the money is coming uh, for this pay rise. Um, is it coming from the council tax? Is it coming from government money, from grants? No, it is coming from the existing budgets. At the uh, time we made the decision, we said that it must come from the existing budgets. So each department has to look at its budgets and see where it can make economies. It can be done. It's been done before. Budgets are usually underspent. It is not going to be a hike on the council tax this year. But effectively, that could mean that um, savings which could be put into delivering services are going to be made to pay the additional salaries. No, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the frontline services should not be affected. The money, I believe, can be found from savings, it can be found from unfilled vacancies. There's a whole vista of things where we do underspend on the budgets, or we can make economies, and these economies have got to be made. But they, will, they would not, or if I was there still, affect the frontline services. But how would you um, deal with the argument that people may have, and have offered, um, that if you're making those savings um, through efficiency, you can put that extra money saved into the frontline services, and that adds to the frontline services, rather than pay extra salaries? That's a good, that is a good argument, but it needs looking at it. It depends which, which frontline services you're talking about. What we have done over the past year, we have increased the general fund reserve. Now, you could argue that some of that could go into the frontline services. What we don't know what's going to happen is how the government cuts are going to affect us, and we have to bear this in mind and protect the frontline services.